Welcome to the Color and Chaos Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Jonah, and I am recording this in Macomb, Michigan. If you're listening to this or watching this and you're in Michigan, then chances are you know where Macomb is. It's near Detroit. But if you're not, then you might not know where Macomb is. But how are you doing? What's what's going on in your life? What what's what's on your heart and mind today? Maybe you're watching this in the morning. Maybe you're driving to work. Maybe you're listening to this in the office. Or maybe you're listening to this on your headphones. Maybe you're at home cooking dinner. Maybe you are lounging around. Wherever you're at, though, my hope and prayer is that this will find you and meet you and do something within your heart. I just want to open up with a prayer and uh, get into today's uh, today's uh, topic, what we're talking about today. Um, and if you do have any prayer requests, if there's anything heavy on your heart or mind um, that maybe this uh, this episode provokes, please feel free. You're always welcome to, to reach out and let me know so that I could be uh, a partner with you with whatever it is that, uh, that you have heavy on your heart and mind. So I just want to pray real quick and get into, t- in, into today's message. Lord God, just thank you for who you are and what you're doing. Lord, uh, we want to take this time right now just to give everything to you, give this moment, give these thoughts, give these anxieties, these worries, these fears, give everything that we're, we're looking forward to today or things that we're rather not have going on in our day today. Lord, we are yours. And God, please take this this time that we have together. Lord, let the words that come out of my mouth be of you and not just uh, words just for the sake of, uh, of, of speaking, but Lord, that is words with weight and with, with just volume to impact and change um, hearts and minds and lives today. No matter where we are today, Lord, the best of times, the worst of times, God, may your word change our hearts and make us more like you. Lord, chisel away the parts of us that don't look like you. Lord, help us love as you love. Help us understand your love. Lord, no matter what, Lord, help us lean into you today. So Jesus, we surrender everything to you. And we ask for you to move in our lives and our circumstances and our hearts right now, right here, as we, uh, we spend some time together seeking you. But we need you, Jesus. In your name we pray and we surrender. Amen. Amen. No matter what you believe, you've probably been exposed to the idea that Christmas is literally the celebration of Christ. And so that's where the Christmas comes from, the celebration of Christ, Christ's birth. And so with talking about Christ's birth, I was thinking about the most foundational verse out of all the Bible, that no matter what you believe, you've probably been exposed to this verse. And I, I for some reason, started thinking about John 3, 16. So I wanted to read this to you um, and kind of go off of this and, and talk about today, love. What is love? When we think about Christmas, you know, do we think about love? Maybe you're going through um, a heartbreak or a hurt right now, and it's hard for you to truly understand and grasp what love is. And no matter where you're at, my hope and prayer is that this will be able to speak into you no matter what you are going through. So I want to read this real quick. This is John 3.16, and this is what the book of John, this is what Jesus says to a man named Nicodemus. This is what Jesus says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And John 3.17 says, For God did not come to condemn the world but that the world shall be saved through him. And when I think about love, when I think about this topic, it's so easy to kind of fly through this verse 
For God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It's so easy to fly through that because anybody, no matter really, like I said, no matter what you believe, we've all been exposed to this verse. It's a very, very easy verse to memorize. And as I was kind of thinking about John 3, 16, I, I started kind of um, thinking and, and, and trying to see, okay, what, what do what do some other people say about John 3, 16? And John Piper, he has this commentary on John 3, 16, and this is what John Piper says about John 3 16 and this is how I wanted to kind of tie into what we're talking about today but he says this in John 3 16 Jesus teaches us that the God who exists loves let that sink in the God who is absolutely loves he loves of all the things that you may say about God be sure to say this he loves God is love. God is without needs, yet God inclines to meet our needs. God is a giver. God is love. And it was a very costly love. John Piper here in this, in this little excerpt of his commentary, his thoughts as he was meditating on John 3, 16, he hints on something that is, is very profound and that ties into this whole Christmas season that is very important and so easy to skim over. And maybe right now in your life, it's easy to skim over this. But what he just now talked about, he talked about the fact that, that we have a creator, that he exists outside of anything that we have to have to live. God doesn't have needs in the sense that he has to breathe or eat or even be loved. God doesn't have to be loved at all. God is. He is the I am. He exists apart from us. Yet, when we look at the scripture, when we look at the Christmas story, when we look at Christ, the epitome of who Christ was was a servant. And we know who God is through Christ. And so when we look at Christ, we see that he came to seek and save those who are lost. And he came to serve. And he modeled that through his whole life, ultimately to being on a cross. And through his love for us, it was such a costly love that he gave every bit of himself for us who did not deserve an inch or an ounce of it. And so in that, in that saying that God is love and saying that in the beginning, you know, God created everything. He created everything, not because of necessity, but he created it out of love, out of love, out of love. Do you know today that you are loved? You are loved. Don't let that just sink by you or, or fly by you. You are loved. You are valued. You matter. No matter what anybody has said about you, no matter what you say about yourself, I know for me, I could be my my worst critic and I could lay awake at night thinking about all the stupid stuff I said and all the stupid stuff I've done and all the regrets I had through my day or my week or my month or my years. And, and But yeah, at the end of it all, no matter what I think about myself, I am loved. Why? Because the I am defines who I am. And I know who I am because I am loves me. He loves me. Why? He gave it all. The the proof of his love was not his words, but his actions. And when we look at Christ, we see a baby who came in the lowest form. He did not come in pomp. He was a king of kings, lord of lords, but he did not come to, to be served, but he came to serve. He modeled humility. He modeled servanthood. He modeled love. And so this Christmas season, it's so easy sometimes to skip over the big picture of what Christ is and who he is and what he defines and he defines love. God is love. No matter what you may think or say about God right now, no matter your circumstances, no matter what you are going through, may it not fly by you this season right now where you are listening or watching this. Even if it's outside the season of Christmas, maybe your listeners are watching this months away from Christmas and and somehow you saw across this, may we not fly by the fact that no matter what you have done, no matter what you are doing right now, no matter what you will do tomorrow, you are loved beyond anything that you can do on your own. You do not produce a love from your creator, savior, and sustainer, but it is all about what he has done for you. He made a way for that relationship that, that, that is broken apart from him. He made a way for us to know him and to experience him. Why? Because he 
he loved us when we had nothing to offer him. In a marriage, if you have one person who loves and one person that rather not be, have anything to do with them, that marriage will not last. No relationship will last on a one-sided love. Yet, when it comes to our hearts towards our creator, it was a always, from the very beginning, a one-sided love. Ever since we chose to, 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 to be God, when Adam and Eve, when they chose to define who they were apart from what God said they were, when God looked at Adam and Eve in Genesis, we know that God said, you are good, that he made everything and he said, it is good. Yet Adam and Eve, through the deception of Satan, they chose, except for believing in what God said, that they are good. They chose to, to, to reach and, and to disobey God. When God said, you can have everything, but you cannot have the knowledge of good and evil. But you are good. You don't need to know what evil is. But man, we chose to know what good and evil was. We chose to be able to make the choice to choose good or evil. And when we did that, we disobeyed. We chose to define who we were. We did not rest in who we were defined, our identities. We did not rest our identities in what God said about us, but we wanted to choose what we were and what we believed. So from that moment on, we chose, we chose to push away God's love, God's identity, God's worth, God's perfection, and we chose to embrace brokenness, and we chose to try to do this on our own. Yet, even in the one-sided love between us and our creator, we have a God who, who pierced that. And no, and no relationship can work on a one-sided love. I mean, let's just look at it. Call a spade a spade. No relationship can last on one-sided love. It won't last. It's not a healthy relationship. So when we think about our hearts that were bent away towards God, how is it that we can have an opportunity to be loved by God and to love God? It's nothing that we can do on our own because remember, it's a one-sided love. Even the days that we say, God, we love you, it's not a, 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 a true, long-lasting love. When we think about love, we think about Christ. And, and I know my love for my, my neighbors and for my, for my brothers and my sisters and, and even those that are strangers or, or even my love towards God is not a, a, a holistic love. So even though it might be a part of love, love is what, what is defined by God. God defines what love is, not me. So I do not love, but yet I am loved by God. It makes no sense. During this season of Christmas, it's, you know, it's a time where we reflect on what Christ has done, that, that we have a creator, savior, and sustainer, that he, the word of God that was from the very beginning, became flesh and dwelt among us. And, and we know that the relationship between God and Christ, that even though they were one, that it was the equivalent of a father to a son. And, it, and, and Jesus came as a model for us to understand God in a way that we can recognize, which is through flesh and blood. And this is what Paul says in Romans 4, verse 20, as he goes all the way back to the very beginning of the scripture in the Old Testament, when we talk about Abraham and God gave Abraham a promise. He said, look, even though you are old in years, you will have descendants that, that outnumber the stars. And we know that Abraham was the father of the Jewish nation. And even Abraham was the father of the Islamic nation through, through, through that bloodline. So, so we see that Abraham was very important. But going all the way back to Abraham, it also ties in to the love of Christ that we can experience through Christmas. And this is what Romans 4.20 says. It says this, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him. If we believe in him. But remember, ever since birth, we have a one-sided love towards Christ. It is only through God and through his grace that we can want to know him and want to love him. 
Because if we're honest with ourselves, each and every one of us want to do what we want to do, how we want to do it, when we want to do it. We want to be God. We want to define what, what our lives will amount to. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. He was handed over to die. Jesus was handed over to die because of our sins. So Jesus, innocent, took our sin and through his innocence, he paid the price for our sin. That our sin should put us on a cross. But Jesus took that away so that when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sin, but he sees his son. Just like when God looks at Abraham... He saw Abraham as righteous. Why? Because Abraham believed in God. He fully believed. He said, God, I trust that you are able to do what you said you will do. And when we believe in God also, God looks at us just like he looked at Abraham. But it wasn't until Christ that we were able to have a relationship with God that went beyond any righteousness that we can muster up. That when it comes to our relationship with God, It is reconciled through what Christ has done for us, his love for us. Our relationship with God is not set on a foundation of our obedience towards him. Because if that's the case, the moment you blow it, the love that that God has towards us will will fade away. That that if it was up to us, then then it would be a one-sided love. That, that, that occasionally had, a, a, you know, the moments of, of, of us trying to, to earn a relationship with God and, and to reconcile and, and to make right what was made wrong, but it just never would work. But through Christ's innocent blood that he shed for us, we are able to have a relationship with God that goes far beyond our ability or our obedience. And we are able to be loved by God. And for us, when we surrender to him saying, God, I know that you did what I could not do in order for me to know you. When we do that, we are loved by God. Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us to develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confidence and hope of salvation, of freedom, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill us with his love. When we were utterly helpless, don't let this fly by. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has made us friends of God. Paul is saying that even if the love for someone would go to dying for someone who is righteous, that that, that makes sense that someone, you know, would would die for someone who, who meant a lot to them. But even that, you don't really see that a lot. For someone to lay down their life, that is an ultimate sacrifice. You are giving everything for someone. But we see that God's love didn't, he didn't die for us because we were righteous. He didn't die for us because we were friends. He died for us when we had nothing to offer him and when it was a one-sided love. 
When we look at Christmas and we look at Christ coming to earth, when the, when God himself, he bridged the gap between our brokenness and our rebellion and his pursuit of us. He took that one-sided love and he bridged the gap through Jesus. Jesus died so that one-sided love would no longer just be one-sided. That God's love for us, that through God, what Christ has done, we are able to see, God, you love me. And through what Christ has done for us, it breaks our heart in order for us to be able to say literally, oh my God, you love me. And I would be a fool to ignore or neglect this love. I am searching and I am hungry for a love that will never leave me. We all are this season or even apart from this season, we all are looking for someone to be able to fill the holes, someone or something to fill the holes within our soul. We are looking for security. We are looking for purpose. We are looking for identity. We are looking for for hope. We are looking for salvation from freedom. We are looking for comfort. We are looking for every single thing in this life that we are looking for or longing for can be found through the love of Christ. Christ, that through God's sacrifice of his son, we are loved and we can experience God and we can know God that no matter what we have done, we are purified through God and through what he has done for us through Christ. We are longing for him. You are longing for him. Do you know today that you are loved You are not loved for what you can do or what you have done. You are loved for who you are. You are made in the image of God and God went through hell and back for you because he loves you. God so loved you so very much that he gave it all in order for you to no longer have to be held by the consequence of our sin and rebellion, which is death but that we can have eternal life, that we can be restored back to the way that it was meant to be from the very beginning when God looked at us and said, you are good. God did not give us Christ to condemn us, to just show us how wicked we are, but he came, he gave us Christ in order for us to see that we are loved he did not come to condemn us, but he became, he, he came in order to save us, save us from our slavery to ourselves and our death. Because it was a one-sided love, we would never choose him on our own. But through Christ, he made a way and he showed us the love of God in order for us to surrender and say, I am no longer going to be held down by this, the chains of, of selfishness and, 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 and self-worship, but I am going to abandon myself and I want to be who you've made me to be. I want to experience your love and I want to share your love. You are loved. You are loved. I also wanted to read this quote going off of this idea that we are loved. And this is from a, 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 um, from a, a person, his name was Watchman Nee. He was a pastor in China. He was a follower of Christ in China during the early 1900s. And he writes this, or, or he spoke this that has been transcribed to this, but this is what came from Watchman Nee. He says this, So life goes on in a vicious cycle of sinning and being forgiven, and then sinning again. I appreciate the blessed fact of God's forgiveness, but I want something more than that. I want deliverance. I need forgiveness for what I have done, but I also need deliverance from what I am. We shall see that the blood of Jesus deals with what we have done. What Jesus did on the cross, that blood that he shed, that paid the price for what we have done. That paid the price for our sins. But then he goes on to say this, whereas the cross deals with what we are, what we are. The cross, the cross dealt with the brokenness within inside of ourselves. 
We, because of our brokenness, deserve to be on a cross. We deserve to die on a cross. We deserve to be alienated from God on a cross. We deserve to die. We deserve to, 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 to be away from the presence of God. But not only did Christ forgive us, but he delivered us from the brokenness of a one-sided love. Christ came. Christ lived. Christ died and Christ rose again to show you and to, to do with whatever he had to do to bridge the gap between you to him, for me to him, and for you to know, for me to know that you and that we are loved. We celebrate what Christ has done because he loved us so much that while we were still sinners, he died for us. Do you know that you are loved? No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're thinking, no matter what you think about God, may you know that he loves, he loves, he loves. No matter what you, the hardness that you might have towards him, in a moment, all that can be taken away when we understand that we are loved Are you enchained? Are you chained to your past? Are you chained to your struggles? Are you chained to your temptations? Are you struggled? Are are you are you struggling to experience his love today? Today, all it takes is for you to say, Jesus, I know you love me. And I would be a fool not to accept that love. We are either surrendered to ourselves. We're either surrendered to others, we are either surrendered to other things, or we can be surrendered to the one who paid it all so that we can know we are loved. God is love. And God served us with a a selfless love in order for us to finally have a heart that breaks for what breaks is. And that is that he breaks over that distance between us to him. That one-sided relationship will become a healthy relationship the moment that we surrender everything to Christ. May we surrender our day right here, right now to him. May we say and ask God, God, please help me experience your love so that I can love others even when it's a one-sided love, even when they do not deserve the love Lord, help me love them because why you love me when I did not deserve your love. No matter what, may we know that we are loved. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you that you are love. Your love will never leave. Your your love will never return void. Lord, your love is not self-seeking. Your love is patient. Your love is kind. That, that, that true love is patient, kind. It's not self-seeking. It does not boast. Lord, you love us with everything. Lord, help us experience that today and not just fly by it this Christmas season. The Christmas story is that you loved us so much that you gave your son in order for us not to perish from our rebellion and from the one-sided relationship that we had towards you and that one-sided love. And you died for us to be able to love you back. Regardless of what we've done and regardless of what we will do, you died so that we can love you back. So Lord, we want to surrender our days to you. We want to surrender this week. We want to surrender this season. We want to surrender our lives to you. Help us love as you have loved us. Help us know your love by getting to know you in your word. Help us not be just just satisfied with just living to live, but help us live to know you and make you known, God. May you become real to us, not just a Christmas story. Jesus, we need you. Please use us. We are yours. In your name we pray and we surrender. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. 
May you walk away from this 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 moment that we had together, whether you were watching this or listening. May you leave this time knowing that you are loved. May we want to know more of that love by knowing who Christ is. I pray that you have a great day today, that you have a great week. Please feel free to reach out to me. If this has blessed you, please feel free to share this to someone who needs to know that they are loved and that the love that God has towards them goes far beyond anything that they can do or anything that they have done, but it's all about what Christ has done for us. So God bless you. You have a great day. See ya.